Hey, welcome to Dance Model Works, and this is part 10 of our modern record truck. And it's hopefully going to be the last part of the series. It's gone on a little bit longer than I'd anticipated. So without any further ado, we've got our three main components here. We've got our basic truck and chassis. We've got the business part here that does the lifting and the towing. And then we've got the body, which was extended last week from here forward and the way I see it we've got three main things that need to be accomplished uh, firstly we need to put all the crusty bits on you know the the horns the roof lights we've got turn signals to put on the front the bumper of course the we need tail lights on the back of our body here as well as that we've got to build a light bar up here that has to still be done and as well as that there has to be some markings made for the truck and I might work on those first might work on those second not sure yet but they do have to be done and then finally is the final assembly bringing everything together and I'm hopefully gonna put doing a little bit of light weathering as well so without any further ado, let's get going here. So as I mentioned earlier, it's about time we get all these little shiny and crusty bits put on. Things are looking pretty plain as they are. I want to call your attention to the chrome sprue, especially the mirrors. And it seems, I don't know, seven or eight times out of ten, when they mold the mirrors, that's where they choose to put the Ejector pins, and I know the ejector pins are necessary. They've got to be on the sprue somewhere. But they always seem to put it on the back side of the mirrors. The parts that, well, they would be a mirror. They should be nice and smooth. So, yes, you wouldn't want them here. But it's, but it's very frustrating to get rid of these. So what I do is I will put a little bit of filler in those. Not a whole lot. And... You could be, use bare metal foil, but then you'd have to get the surface absolutely perfect, which is kind of hard to do, seeing as, it, as it's recessed. So I'll show you what I use to make mirrors. So I use potato chip bag material. That kind of, I'm not quite sure exactly what it's called. I think it's mylar, to tell you the truth. But at any rate, the nice thing about mylar is is it's a very reflective surface but it's thicker than bare metal foil so if you don't have the underlying surface absolutely perfect at least it's not going to be all crinkly now mind you you have to find a spot that you haven't crinkled up on in terms of the bag even in a bag that's been you know tossed around quite a bit there are some smooth areas here i've managed to isolate a fairly crinkle free area and i'm going to trim it to the right size to go in my mirrors. So here's our mirrors ready for mounting. Now I could have tried to get a perfect radius in the corners but I find that that's not really that noticeable. So I've glued my chip bag material onto the mirrors and my substrate was not absolutely perfect because you can still see a little bit of wrinkleness but overall when you look at it you can tell it's supposed to be a mirror and not just some shiny surface. Now, if you really, really wanted to, you could probably get an optically perfect backing and put the chip material on it. But the reflection from the chip material isn't perfect anyway. But I think this looks a whole lot better than the, the double sink marks that we originally saw on these mirrors. So, all the crusty bits have been put on. Now, there's still a couple more things that need to be done, but... That's probably 95% of it. Headlights, horns, roof lights, the wipers, and of course the mirrors, as you saw, they got put together. Now it's time to do the nerve-wracking painting of our latches silver. See how badly I can screw that up. A couple of small touch-ups required, but it wasn't a total disaster. And I think the, I think the recast ones match the originals pretty good. I've decided to do something a little more substantial in terms of a light bar than what the kit came with. 
Basically, I'm going to do something very similar to the light bar that was on the truck at Ross Towing. And basically, there's going to be two hoops of metal, one nearly vertical and then the other one at a much more rakish angle coming up. And of course, you know, they'll be curved. So I'm going to have to break out a candle and start bending some plastic and hopefully we'll get some nice uniform bends. And the other thing is, is the kit comes with a uh, round style of uh, flashing lights. And what I want to use on this is I want to have two bars. But fortunately, I have a set I'm going to be able to take from another kit. Using the, uh, the candle method, I've put four bends in my stock plastic rod. Now, I went and I splurged and I got some Evergreen Styrene. And it's one eighth inch rod, you can see right there. And the reason I did that instead of just using some random sprues is it's oftentimes hard to get good uniform bits of sprue. And this is really going to be noticeable. Now you might be wondering, well, this is awfully wide there, Dan. Why did you make them so wide? And the reason I did that is I knew there was no way I was going to be able to get these going at exactly the same angle. So I didn't even try. What I'll do is I'll decide, you know, whatever's going to be the top, I'm going to cut that to length and then glue it together because my light bar will hide any joins that I've got. And that way I can be certain that all of my pipes are basically going the same direction. That's the theory. So now we've got our hoops put together. Now all I'll have to do is cut the angles. I'm looking for something kind of like that with the lights on the top. That's what I'm hoping for. I've taped these pieces on here and they're not going to be this long. They're only really going to be to the end of that pipe that's coming down. But this way, I'm able to glue this in place, establish it, and then I'm able to nibble this other piece here until I get it just right, and then I'll glue it on. And here is both of the hoops in place. And as I said, the this will get trimmed off far shorter than what it is. So to make our flashing beacons for our light bar here, I'm going to use this lens. I'm going to have to cut it in half because obviously it's not nearly wide enough to go on this light bar. But this lens actually comes from this Revell kit. They're 77 GMC record truck. And I guess when I get around to building it, I'll just have to do something else for the light bar on it. Here's one half of that lens cut down. Now I glued a piece of acetate on the end to heal it up so that way it's a it's a full fully enclosed lens here i was thinking of maybe putting a box between the two severed chunks i just thought that looked a little too bulky this is the base for my lights and it's just these parts here on the sides are just made up of layers of styrene i glued them together and then i smoothed them to shape now i was just going to with plain rectangles and i thought if i undercut them a bit they might look a little bit better I used some more of those marker lights off of the AMT transparency sets in order to make these rotating beacons. Now, I will admit this is not what I initially wanted to use. Originally, I had a brilliant idea of buying some sequins, those little silvery circles with the, uh, with the holes in the middle of them. I thought if I glued those together back to back, they would look awesome. And I still think they would have. The only problem is, is the smallest diameter sequin I could find is five millimeter. And unfortunately, the lenses are not deep enough to cover those. So I had to go with my backup plan, which was these. And hopefully they'll look all right when we get it all together. So here's how our beacons are gonna look underneath the covering. Now I'm still gonna have to tint those coverings. I've added a few parts to the back end here. These chrome caps, as well as these areas here where the taillights are supposed to mount, as well as these steps. Now, Italeri gives you some round silver parts, some round chrome parts that you're supposed to put some clear lenses on, probably that you'd obviously want to tint red. But I have 
a couple of these sprues from past AMT truck kits. Let's see. We'll focus in on here. And you can see we have what for many, many years was the standard North American truck taillight. And I have two of these sprues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two of these on each side of the back of the wrecker. One of them on each side is going to have this lens right there painted silver to be the backup light. And I'm, I'm going to go with these just because they, for so many years, these were the North American standard tail light. So here's our clutter installed on the back end. And as I promised, the, uh, the North American style tail light's been added. And these lights here, at first I wasn't sure if they were supposed to be the sort of uh, tail lights that could be put on to something that was being towed magnetically. But upon closer looking, I think these are supposed to be work lights that the driver can position and light up what he's doing. Now these handrails here, they were supposed to be chrome. What I did is I installed them and then I painted parts of them green. And I left the areas bare that the operator might be grabbing frequently. The idea being is, is those areas tended to have the paint worn off and them basically polished by the operator's hands. So a few months ago when I was debating what color I was going to paint the tow truck, I came up with orange mainly because it was a very safety conscious color and it would be easy to make black decals that would show up well on it. So when I was telling one of my kids, Logan exactly, uh, that I was going to paint it orange, he said, it was going to look like a giant pumpkin. And I thought to myself, you know what? Why don't I put a logo of a pumpkin on it and the towing company could call it their great pumpkin. E.g. it's their pride of their fleet and usually uh, the, the big class 8 wrecker is the pride of any towing company's fleet. So the more I thought about it, the more I thought, let's call it Van Pelt Towing. They can call their big tow truck the Great Pumpkin. And that's basically my homage to Charlie Brown. I could say Linus's Great Pumpkin, but that would be a little too strong. But at any rate, we have this great big huge space on the side of the body that we could put a nice big graphic on there. I quickly sketched out this little guy right here. And I was thinking, you know what? That in black on the side of the tow truck with Van Pelt towing and then maybe the great pumpkin underneath would look pretty cool. So as I said, I quickly sketched this out and I just finally finished a large version of it in pencil. There we go. The next step is going to be to ink it in so that I can put it into a computer, I can scan it up and down in size, I can make copies of it, and hopefully eventually make a decal to go on the side of the towing truck. After scanning my artwork into the computer and manipulating it size-wise in uh, Adobe, I printed off just a test image right here. Because this is where we want our big Great Pumpkin logo to go right there. And then, using word art, it's hard to do left-handed. There we go. At any rate, I'm just messing around with getting my type the way I want it to. I'm pretty much happy with my drawing, but I'm going to mess around with the type a little bit more. As well as that, I've got to put some lettering for the doors of the cab and probably some phone numbers and things like that just to jazz things up a bit. So what I've done here is I've printed out multiple copies of the artwork I want to use. I was actually hoping to get 
six of these on. I only really need two, but I'm expecting I'm going to screw this up big time. At any rate, this gives me two for each side, and I've got an extra set of the curved print just in case I have to file all those up. What I really should do is throw a couple of swastikas down here. Not because I'm a neo-Nazi, but you know, a lot of uh, model kits don't come with swastikas because in Europe it's illegal. At any rate, I'm going to be taking this over to the photocopy place. I probably could have combined all these images in the computer, but that was actually seemed like more work than just simply printing it out a bunch of times and taping it on. That's this step done. Now, in order to make my decals, I used this Expert's Choice decal, and it is made somewhere on here. It says by Bare Metal Foil, there you can see at the top, and this is the laser type. And these are the clear sheets, and they recommend that you either use them in a laser printer or a photocopier. And on the back, it does state that these have been tested in photocopiers and things like that. So if you come across a store that may be reluctant keep your package on hand so you can show them that no no it's not going to hurt your photocopier at any rate the first sheet i ran through is this one and as you can see some of the images didn't develop properly so i was a little annoyed because this was three dollars but at any rate i went into the menu of the photocopier and by the way you need to use a photocopier that has a bypass that so you can use your own paper and they did have a setting that said transparencies. So I tried that. This is the result. It wasn't quite as dark, but there was no flaking or anything like that, and the developing worked properly. What they recommend you do is you take it home and you give it a very light dusting of clear finish. Let that dry and then put a heavier one on. And I'm assuming that's in order to make sure that the image really does get sealed to the decal film. All right, so that's our first one on. I don't see anything horrible happening with the rest of them. Let's cross our fingers and get them on. All right, the cab decals went on. Nothing bizarre happened. That's nice to see. Now I've put some setting solution on the phone number and the number six there just to see if anything terrible happens. Hopefully nothing does and it'll really solidly lock it to the model. All right, we've got our pumpkin on the side here. And we're gonna have to see if this settles down nicely. Just occurred to me, this is probably one of the largest individual decals I've ever applied. And that's what she looks like after I've got the decal setting solution on it. Took about two heavy applications and it really settled into all those door panels really good really quite happy with the way that turned out now what i'm going to do is i'll give this a shot of gloss coat just to blend everything in now let's do the other side and it's done now i didn't show you some boring stuff such as gluing the the bed onto the truck i mean that was just simply use some contact cement and as well as putting my wheel hubs on some other assorted stuff that was pretty boring. Unfortunately, this model is too big to put on that little turntable thing, so I can't just spin it around in front of you. But maybe what I'll do is I'll take a bunch of glamour shots of it, and we'll do a little slideshow. So that was our modern wrecker truck, 
and I really enjoyed building it and I did a few things I haven't done before such as making my own decals. I have to really say that the uh, bare metal foil custom decal film works really really good and I've got a load of spare parts I can use for other projects and I'd like to thank everybody for following along who uh, have given me comments of encouragement and until next time keep on modeling